Belichick on the Cowboys playing with the lead. Nobody's better at playing ahead than Dallas is. They control the ball. They can play from ahead on defense with their pass <laughs> rush and their coverage. That really plays into their hands. We'll see what happens when they get into a tighter game. Maybe they have to play from behind. Mm. Um, you know, some teams are more comfortable that way. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, sure. You know, uh, that's that's established. <laughs> I, I don't know. Does does Belichick have a good beat on on what the Cowboys are good at here? I'll tell you what. The one thing that Bill will do is uh, he will he's study, got to have draft envy. He he'll study that tape. He will. It's amazing. His career and Tom Landers' career very similar. How they both ended. But but Belichick he he he'll watch all your tape. But where's the where's he getting that they control the ball offensively? I don't know where that's coming from. Okay, yeah, I mean, you know maybe that was just some word potpourri. He snapped back into coach mode. Yeah, I I think that to me that the controlling the ball maybe he watched the first half of the, the game the other day. But I I just like the, the questions I had. We all know that I'm not going to say it anymore. But I would I would say that you know he's you know, he's he understands where. Uh, you know, they they played last year, what, two years ago, right? That kind of thing. Maybe Bill's kind of having a little bit of that. They played uh, last year, yeah. And he, it they was played the last worst year. loss that he's oh, ever right. had yeah. in the history of his career. Yeah, so maybe that's what he's kind of basing things on. Now, he's going to talk about the Cowboys personnel department. I think his answer here is, is just fascinating to try to read between the lines because, you know, Brian's been telling us since Belichick was let go of New England that that would be the biggest obstacle is the Cowboys front office has been established for so long you'd be disrupting a lot of very important so. and influential people in the organization. Yeah. Would you want Belichick as your head coach? Like, you know, it, it's, here's the thing with me. Before the Cowboys hired Mike Zimmer, you tell me, can I get Belichick as a head coach scouting the opposition, deploying his defense while I have a different, completely different independent offensive mind and front office? I would sign off on that. But now that you have Mike Zimmer here adding this layer, I'm not sure where the benefit of hiring Belichick would be. We saw that he was great with Tom Brady. Mm -hmm. We believe he can still coach defense. Mm -hmm. But if he's going to insist on on bringing offensive coaches and, and insist on disrupting this personnel department that, that I think is doing a hell of a job over the last decade plus, I don't think it would be worth it to get Belichick for that. Bill says, I think you got to give Dallas personnel department, Steven, a lot of credit. Look, the only way that you can afford CD, Dak, some of their other high-priced players is you got to find good players that don't cost much. Yeah. They've done a really good job at that, other than the the 2023 draft and, and a yeah. few others. Yeah, that was that was a that was not a good one, but uh, yeah, the, to me, there's if you give me, say Ben Johnson from Detroit, and Mike Zimmer, if that's the case, I mean, if if there's a change, if there's a change, you know, I, I don't necessarily. I don't, how do you guys feel about Josh McDaniels if, good. With, with this offense? Yeah, I would not be in favor of that at all. I mean, I think that's a that's a great qualifier to have if you're yeah, if, if you're, you're kicking if, the tires on Bill. It's yeah. like, man, we don't really I trust think it's more you. More important, Ernie Adams comes along with him than anybody. I I think that, he was a great fit with Tom. Yeah, I and think, Jay Cutler. I I just kind of feel like that that if you're if you're doing something with Bill, you know, okay, are you who who are the coaches you're bringing along? Because now you have Dak for you know you're gonna have Dak for four more years. Yeah, you, you you better find somebody that that can that can make the quarterback work. Yes. you know, make the quarterback. And we, we talk about how can you develop, and I guess you can get better, and everybody does. But I just kind of wonder, like you know, if you're telling me it's Josh McDaniels, and I'm I'm not necessarily getting fired up about no. that. No, I would I would like Mike Zimmer and name a different offensive coordinator. Just pick one. Well, that's what I'm saying. If Ben Johnson were your head coach potentially, and then yeah. You know, and he's the primary play caller, and then he's Ben Johnson's got a, a really good offensive line coach. He that you know can there's there's a lot of toughness about that Detroit team, and there's a there's the way that they I mean he's got that guy golf playing at a high level. And I'm I don't know, I'm not I was never the big the biggest golf fan, but man, they they their offense, the receivers, how they get the running game. There's a lot of a lot of things you really like about the what he's done. Obviously, values running back. You know, might even use a a, a first or second round pick on one of them. Okay, mm -hmm. they've uh, Belichick on what's the question here on uh, continuing to praise the Cowboys' kicking game. I'll pass on that. Okay, yes, Aubrey's great though. Salute yeah, to Aubrey. Aubrey's awesome. Salute to the sport of soccer for developing good, accurate kickers. 
And on DeMarvian Overshow and Belichick, another thing the Cowboys got this year was like another free draft choice. Overshow 11 tackles, didn't even play last year because he tore his ACL, so he came back for his second year. And this is the thing to me that gives them a chance to be different. You know, along with Kendrick's Overshown, could they get, you know, above average or maybe Overshown in his, in, in, you know, in his, his, his youth can give you dominant play there? That's what's been missing from their defense. Their whole linebacker room is completely remade. Yeah. It just completely remade. And, and, and he's right, though, about what Overshown brings. It's just so much of a speed element. And the, and the kid playing safety, playing linebacker, he's got really good instincts. He tackles very well. Yeah. You, know, you see, I mean, that's a young guy. You, in space, bringing down a guy like that, the wrap up tackle and all that, man, the guy's he's, textbook the way he plays. He's a no, he's a no brainer superstar. I mean, he does, he does it all. He's got the athleticism for the splash plays, and he's a great finisher, as you said. Mm-hmm. But he's also got the instincts as well, where he's just he's doing the right thing so that somebody else is making the play here. And and it's, it was a thing of beauty to watch him and Kendricks play next to each other last week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and doing the right thing so. Your teammate can make a play is something they missed big time last year in some huge key situations that, you know, ultimately embarrassed them. And, you know, that's the the next topic here uh, as we go to Tim Kalashar's article this morning in the morning news talking about Dak and not being the only critical piece to a successful Cowboys season. And you look at the highest paid quarterback and top paid wide receiver, you know, a lot of focus can go there. But I thought the key to his piece was when you're – he's talking about the Chiefs. says, I would argue that uh, uh, you know no one has, has been better in the modern era of football, that, as, as he will prove over time, but the Chiefs' defense has been more dominant than its offense during at least two of the Super Bowl runs, especially last year's. I don't think we talk enough about the personnel, the defensive stars over there, and, and, and Steve. Yeah, I think that's a great point. I mean, look, and I, and I brought Steve's it up last look. week when we talked about, you know, as great as Mahomes is – uh, he probably isn't winning as many Super Bowls without Chris Jones on the other side, who also has stepped up and made that secondary. Plays. I think was huge in that Super Bowl game, right? They were right, but Chris Jones is their best defensive player, and Chris Jones has come up with some massive plays throughout their run. And and yeah, the secondary was great. Uh, Legereus Sneed's been awesome for them. I mean, and and what Steve Spagnuolo has done, he has built himself as arguably the best big game defensive coordinator maybe in the history of the NFL, hmm. with what he did with the Giants and winning Super Bowls there, and now carrying it over and doing it with Andy Reid and the Chiefs. So 100%, that, that is very, very fair. Uh, taught the, the Chiefs' defense, we love the quarterback, we love what they did with Tyreek Hill and Andy Reid on offense, and and that all deserves praise, or praise right? Travis Kelsey, but that defense has been outstanding. Yeah, yeah, and and I don't think Tom ever won one without a top-five defense. You know, So I, I think it's you know definitely worth focusing on, especially because we have this opportunity with this personnel and this this coordinator. I mean, the the Cowboys at times over the last two years have appeared to be uh, having the potential to play great defense, but in the longer the season went on, the more it became clear how we're going to break this thing down. You know, and that's, again, what makes this New Orleans game so important with the style of offense that they run. Kind of reminds me of Arizona last year, even though New Orleans better than Arizona. Are you going to get into trouble with your discipline and end up on the ropes against a team that you're a touchdown favorite against at home? And if that happens, I think this this narrative is you know on thin ice right now. Could it become solidified in a in a big way, you know, Sunday and then the following week against Baltimore? Like these next two games are going to go a huge way. I'm doing my best to not get carried away. I've made a pledge. I'm not going to fall for optimism because you beat bad offenses like the Cowboys have been doing for pretty much all of Dak's career. But, you know, these next two tests are are, are pretty dang big ones and a, and a chance, I think, to give this thing some credibility, right? Even the most cynical Cowboy fan, at some point, you would turn and say, oh, okay, this is a great team. Um, and, you know, maybe we're, maybe we're about to see that. 